it's time for the Susan Taylor Podcast, where we discuss the yoga of mind, medicine, and healing. Author of Feeling Good Matters, Sexual Radiance, and the Vital Energy Program, Dr. Taylor imparts authentic knowledge and practical tools that inspire, educate, and empower us to be a healing force for positive change. So join us and take your life and our planet to the next level. Hello and welcome to episode 130, Immunity versus Fear. Is panic increasing your risk? And of course, I'm talking about our immunity with relation to the COVID-19 virus. What stimulated this topic is as I was riding my bike to the beach, I noticed that there were many people walking outside enjoying the beautiful day, but many had their heads down, not looking up. Some were heavily masked and some weren't. But it just seemed that everyone, you know, everyone was practicing social distancing. But what struck me that many people were carrying a very deep burden with them just because we're practicing social distancing, but does that really mean we can't look up and say hello to someone or just wave our hand? And, you know, they were walking for their health, of course. Everyone wants to stay in shape and just feel, get out in nature. But I felt they were not able to enjoy their walk. And as I said, many waved. I did an experiment. I started waving to everyone and many didn't. And I thought for a moment, is it the virus that's going to kill us? Or is it the emotions, you know, from this pandemic that the pandemic has brought these emotions forward? Is that what's going to be our potent poison that kills us? And when I'm talking about kill, kills us, I'm talking about uh, killing, killing the human emotion of love and compassion and joy. The point here I'm making in for today's episode is, do we have to worry about our emotional and mental immunity? And I would have to say yes. You know, we've been encouraged to protect our physical bodies, such as washing our hands, social distancing, wearing masks, very, very important for protecting our physical body. But are we really being given anything in terms of our mental and emotional health? You know, the fear, anger, and panic surrounding the coronavirus, and of course it's gonna be post-coronavirus, it's widespread. And while I'm not minimizing the seriousness of the virus, nor is this an episode about whether to wear a mask or not, that's not what I'm getting at, the panic along with the anger, the animosity, the fear, the self-righteousness itself is making us all more susceptible actually to a potential spread. Everyone, yes, I'm saying everyone, needs tools to train their mind and practices to keep their immune system healthy to combat the disease. Just as everyone needs physical practices such as washing our hands, not touching our face, wearing masks when appropriate to prevent the spread. But let's turn to look at more subtle happenings. Thoughts and emotions, and I've said this before, do indeed influence our immune system. And I've been stating this time and time again over the last two months. And science does reveal that negative emotions such as fear, anger, jealousy, animosity really depresses our ability to do what it does best. And that means fight off and protect us against disease. It guards the body against these outside viruses and pathogens. You know, when we're fearful, we secrete hormones that suppress the immune system. Also, when someone gives you a glare, you know, either because you're wearing a mask or not, they're both one and the same, but you get the glare that affects a release of hormones in the body, which means our immune system gets put into, gets put, I say, on a sabbatical. It's not available to protect us. And we know this. We don't need an evidence-based study to tell us that our thoughts affect the health and stability of our immune system. We know that when our minds have positive, happy thoughts, that we feel different then when we're in the midst of these fearful thoughts, negative emotions towards ourselves and others, which cloud our functions. So how do we know this? How do we know this? Again, we don't need to study a scientific study, even though you know I'm a research person and a scientist, we don't need it to see the difference between someone who carries stress and someone who carries fear and someone who's more balanced. We can see the difference. 
if we're wearing a mask and we're feeling happy, that's going to be reflected. If we're not wearing a mask and we're happy, that's going to be reflected. If we're wearing a mask, opposites even, it doesn't matter what you're wearing or what you're doing. You must be socially responsible, of course, but it's the thoughts. What I'm trying to say, it's those really deep rooted emotions that are getting fed now because of this time. We're all being crunched a little bit. And it's those emotions that we have already latent within us that are surfacing. So if you're a person who has a tendency, has a lot of seeds of fear or seeds of anger, they're going to come forward loud and clear. If you're a person that has seeds of joy and happiness and sort of laid back, that's going to come forward. And whatever's in between, that's my point. In yoga science, we do know that negative emotions attract and create destructive forces and positive emotions of love, compassion, kindness, friendliness attract the benevolent forces that uplift us and heal. You see, this is what we have to really look at, positive emotions. And it's very hard to find them if everyone's panicking in fear and we're not putting out a friendly wave, a smile, even if you're wearing a mask a smile. People want to see that or a wave instead of wearing a mask and putting your head down as if something's going to jump on you from, you know, five miles away. And I'm not making fun of that. I'm just suggesting that we have to be mindful of what's going on on the inside of us because that comes out whether we're wearing a mask or not. Our 60,000 to 80,000 thoughts a day are primarily around survival and primarily negative because they play a toll on how our body's operating, especially now. Remember, our mind and body are one. When added to the concept that your mind in many ways doesn't know the difference between real and imaginary, what do you think it's going to become? You know, thoughts come and go. Remember, thoughts are always coming and going. You can guarantee that. But what you focus on is what creates your biological destiny. And that's the point. You can see the damage your panic may be uh, having on you and your, you know, with your risk of contracting a circulating virus. That doesn't mean someone who gets it is more fearful than someone who's not. I'm just saying we're stepping, we're going forward, we're post COVID-19, but we're in a new arena now. The virus is here. It's probably not going to be leaving because it's now part of our fabric of nature. So how are we going to move forward? Yes, we're going to move forward with social responsibility, possibly wearing masks, still washing hands, not touching our face. But also let's move forward with being mindful of other people. Maybe they are afraid. Wave to them. Smile. Even if you have a mask on, it doesn't have to be a prison for us. So we could actually see the damage our panic has uh, by just what's really going on. When stress, anxiety, worry, overwhelm us, depression, and isolation, which many of us are feeling, and when they're left unchecked, they actually reduce the effectiveness of our immune system and make us and everybody around us more susceptible. Remember, it's not just about us. What we project Within ourselves, we have an energy field, and we project that on the outside of our face. And if we're projecting love and compassion and friendliness towards everyone, even if they're afraid, if everyone's buying toilet paper, there's no reason to attack people. Fear is real for many people. We all have it on some level, but let's go out and wave and put a smile. I did an experiment as I was walking and riding my bike, whether I was wearing a mask or not at the time, I've done both. I smile and I wave. And I wanted to do an experiment to see how many people wave back. I got more waves back like, hey, hey, that's pretty neat. Somebody's acknowledging me. We're human beings, everyone. And human beings acknowledge each other. We even acknowledge nature. Wave, say hello. There's nothing wrong with that. It'll uplift the spirit even if the person is fearful that you're waving to. I did the experiment for the last week. I always like to experiment before I come and I do an episode. I got more responses like, hey, you know, hi, people with masks and without. So let's get over the mask thing. And I I say that and I'm bringing it up because I've heard some comments that were pretty, pretty intense because our global response so far is either we, you know, we're giving into the panic or taking, you know, and taking it on, or we've undergraded the seriousness of the potential threat. 
So we have both things going on. The people are saying, oh, I don't need a mask. Everything's free herd immunity. Well, are they really serious too? Are they undergrading the seriousness of the issue? We must have an understanding of what's going through everyone's mind. We either have people panicking or people undergrading the serious because of their fear. So if we come middle of the road and realize that, yes, it is a virus, it doesn't feel good to get it, we feel sick, some of us get more seriously sick than others, it's potentially dangerous. And for many, it's potentially dangerous. And for others, it's not. Let's look at everyone as brothers and sisters on this path. And we want to really hold their hand, basically, not literally, I'm using this as just an example, and say, hey, it's okay, give a little wave even with social distancing. So by now, moving forward, we can adopt a more mature approach where we can exercise intelligent and skillful responses from a public health perspective and remain calm in the process, literally remain calm, adopting the tools and practices we need to enhance our emotional well-being. And let's look at this, the emotional well-being of those around us. Remember, I spoke about emotional contagion. Emotions are contagious. That's what happens. So let's pay attention to our own and see if we could fill that pool of energy, of emotion in a very positive way for all of us, all of us. Everyone has a way of dealing with this and it all must be embraced, embraced. So how do we rewire from panic? Well, let's initiate new actions with enthusiasm. You know, spring is here, it's time for renewal. Let's step out with optimism and spread your time, you know, your time and love and compassion, creating the world that you wanna see. You be the leader in this. Prana energy and vitality are key and the way to connect with energy and vitality is through learning how to breathe, metabolically I call it, with diaphragmatic breathing and learn to regulate your nervous system. Breathing is the link. It links us to the divine. It also links us to the body. It's clue, clearly, clearly the tool that you have at your disposal to regulate how your mind works. When you breathe skillfully, you can circumvent a panic and anxiety attack. You have less stress hormones cursing around your bloodstream and you stay healthier. You learn to move your energy through your entire body with ease and your immune system is totally enhanced with that. And learn to meditate, tame the mind and harness the energy of that mind through practices like pranayama and mantra meditation to get the mind under control. Meditation gives you the tools to ride these waves that come. It's not, this isn't the first time it's happened and it's certainly not the last time everyone. And fear and panic, we just happen to be in it right now and it's moving out. But we want to end up on the shore with stability and comfort. And I always say ride the waves because some of you who know me, I love to be out in the ocean riding waves. And when I ride the waves, I really look at it as the wave of life. If you look at where you're going on the shore, if you look at where your focus is, where your mind is with a positive intent, you end up there. If you start fearing on these cross currents, a wave will come and take you right out, toss you in the undertow, and that's that. And you might be drifted away in some uh, you know, side current. So learn to meditate. So what I just mentioned is initiate new actions with enthusiasm. That's how we're rewiring from our panic. Pranic energy and vitality are the key. So connect with your breath and learn to meditate. Remember, our comfort zone has been pushed, possibly creating, you know, restlessness, impatience. And it's time for personal development and spiritual growth. It's the perfect time right now. Increase your capacity to endure difficulty and stress with courage. Reconnect with who you are rather than what you've been conditioned to believe you are. It's time now to really grow and flourish again. Reclaim your courage and create that new outlook. Right now, there's so much opportunity to see the things with more beauty and appreciation. I appreciate food more now. I appreciate even toilet paper more now, believe it or not. We have a deeper understanding of things. We treat others differently. It's happening. People are more friendly. So learn to move the energy through your body and mind using pranayama, using meditation practices. You can use the healing modalities of Ayurveda, yoga, even astrology. 
Heal yourself now with herbs, change your diet, your lifestyle habits. It's never too late. Our whole life can begin right now. Tame the mind and harness the energy of the mind through practices, as I've mentioned, pranayama, mantra meditation, and get your mind under control. Don't lose your connection to the wonder of life. And that brings us to the end of this episode. And as always, do your research. If you know someone who may want to know about the topic and are interested in the topics of yoga science, please share. Share the knowledge. That's how we serve humanity. Send the link to someone. The Susan Taylor Podcast does come out every week and is available on susantaylor.org, iTunes, Stitcher, YouTube, and other podcast platforms. And join me for Behind the Scenes, the commentary and the question and answers that come in for this episode on YouTube. And again, as I always say, until next time, I'll say it again, remain calm and support me by sharing this podcast.